welcome to the History Show. I'm Steven. And I'm Jack. And tonight we'll be talking about the Muslim empires. Before we play battle footage from the Ottoman Safavid conflict that had been going on since 1603, we'll give you some background information on the Muslim empires from the 1400s to the 1800s. First, we begin with the Ottomans. They were founded by Uzman in 1281. They conquered Constantinople in 1453 under their most famous leader, Mehmed II. Gunpowder and other new weaponry helped attribute to this victory. The Ottomans were Sunni Muslims and were in constant conflict with the Shia Safavids. Dimi, or people of the book, Christians and Jews, were allowed to practice their religion but had less legal rights, such as not being able to testify in court. And in response to a growth of Shiism, Shia Islam, growing in parts of the Ottoman Empire, the Ottomans killed hundreds of thousands of Shia Muslims. Trading under the Ottomans was very good at first, however, as trade shifted to the Americas, Istanbul, or as some know, Constantinople, began to lose its dominance. One reason for this was the fact that Spain brought in a lot of new gold from the New World, and that caused inflation to rise and the price of gold to drop, and that largely contributed to Istanbul losing its prominence as a world trading center. Next, the Safavids. They came to power under Shah Ismail in and ruled from 1501 to 1722. The Safavid Empire was one of the largest Persian empires ever. They revived Persia as an economic stronghold between East and West and established an efficient state and bureaucracy based on checks and balances. Also, they spread Shia Islam to parts of Iran and Anatolia. The Safavids reached a peak under Abbas the Great, who moved the capital from Qazvin to Isfahan, which became a pinnacle of Safavid architecture. The Safavids not only persecuted Sunni Muslims, but also Shia Muslims with different views than the government. Sufi mystics were forbidden, which was ironic due to the Sufi origin of the Safavids, and the importance of the Hajj was reduced and replaced by pilgrimages to other Shia Muslim sites. Now we move on to the Mughals, the last of our gunpowder empires. In 1526, Babur, a descendant of Mongols and Turks, used a superior gunpowder technology to conquer a large part of northern India. The greatest leader of the Mughal dynasty was Akbar. He brought more of central India under his control and established an efficient bureaucracy. He encouraged cooperation between Hindus and Muslims and encouraged women's rights. Akbar outlawed Satai, the practice among Hindu elite classes of burning women on top of their husbands' funeral pyres. He also encouraged merchants to arrange separate market days for women so those following purda, or confinement to their homes, could go out and shop. Next, we will, go, we will play some battle footage from 1610 in an Ottoman Safavid conflict in our segment, a battle between two Muslims in the land between two rivers. I'm the History Show correspondent Stephen Lefevre. And I'm Jack Woodbrenner. We will be bringing you back to 1610 when the Ottomans fought the Safavids and showing you a battle scene from back then. The person in black will be an Ottoman. The person in blue will be a Safavid. But first, a message from one of our sponsors. Apple Computer. When you're hungry, but the only thing around is a computer. As you can see, the Safavid beat the Ottoman, and this continued throughout the conflict with the Safavid forces under Abbas the Great defeating the Ottomans and gaining back parts of Anatolia. While the Safavids did win, the Ottoman army is comprised of highly trained soldiers called Janissaries. They were Christian boys who were captured and placed with Turkish families to grow accustomed to Islamic traditions and teachings. Sometimes the Janissaries would even be given to the Ottoman Empire by their parents in hopes that they would reach a high position in the Ottoman Empire. Next, we go to our new travel segment where we explore the best places in the best cities of the Muslim empires in our segment called Got Sand. Now for our new travel segment, Got Sand. If you're a Sunni, I suggest going to Istanbul. You can pray in the Hagia Sophia, which was which was converted into a mosque after the Ottoman takeover of Constantinople and features beautiful Byzantine and Persian architecture and is a great example of cultural diffusion.
Due to the soft of its low tolerance of other religions, if you believe anything slightly different than the inhabitants of Isfahan, don't go there. If you, if you do want to go there, I would suggest visiting the Shah Mosque. It was built by Sheikh ha Bahi and opened in 1629. If you're a fan of architectural, architecture in general, you should definitely check out the Taj Mahal. In Mughal, it is in the Mughal Empire and was built by Shah Jahan for, as a mausoleum for his wife, Mumtaz Mahal. It includes minarets, which are the four large pillars surrounding the Taj Mahal, and has Muslim, Indian, and Persian influences. Thank you for turning into this episode of the History Show. We hope you enjoyed it. And join us next week when we talk about something other than the Muslim empires.